say the gas explosion happened in the basement. It may have been started by the water heater, they say, or possibly the furnace. Tom Slattery, just back from his fishing trip, surveyed what was left of his home. He says he's just thankful no one was hurt. The timing was great for everybody to be out of the house. You know, you know someone's looking over somebody. You know. Slattery grew up in this house. His mother wept nearby. He's between jobs right now, yet even though he just lost everything, he seemed to take it all in stride. What am I supposed to do? You know, no, it's not much on crying, so you know, that'll probably come a little later. Investigators won't know the exact cause of the explosion until late next week. Jeff Kelly, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. The explosion also damaged two nearby homes, and the blast apparently blew the family's dog through a wall. She survived. However, the family's pet cat did not. Minneapolis police continued their search today for a suspect in the shooting death of a Coon Rapids man. 47-year-old Wallace Handwork was shot yesterday at the University Healthcare Center. Where the house was on fire. The whole north side of the house just blew out. And then at the same time, it was all a fire. Today, the family who lived here watched as investigators tried to find some clues to what caused the fire. Tom Slattery grew up in this house. He was at Big Sandy Lake for the fishing opener. His wife and children had gone to her sister's to stay the night. I'm just thankful that uh, they decided to go out to her sister's house to spend the night. Slattery says they had been having problems keeping the pilot light to the water heater lit. Arson investigators say the heater was still intact, but the furnace was blown apart. They say it'll take some time to determine which one caused the explosion. They do know, though. At this point in the investigation, uh, there's a lot of indication that it was a gas explosion. The Slatteries have lived here many years. Tonight, they'll be staying with other family members. They'll be trying to figure out where they're going to rebuild, but at the same time, they're very thankful that no lives were lost here. Yes, Carolyn, there was a, another house explosion not so long ago, right? That's correct. It was just about three weeks ago in another area of Minneapolis, and that one was caused by a natural gas leak. Carolyn, are officials offering any advice, just general advice to folks? They definitely are. They haven't determined whether it uh, happened in the furnace or the hot water heater. Either way, they do say for people to check their heaters, anything that is gas uh, furnace in that way. And they say especially if that equipment is old. All right. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Well, a house fire in Milwaukee has now claimed the life of a sixth child. Two-year-old Justin Moore died this morning. He'd been in critical condition since being burned in this fire Thursday night. Justin's brother and four sisters also died in the blaze. Another sister, 11-year-old Cynthia Sharp, survived by jumping from a second-story window. Authorities say the children's mother had left them alone. Effort to help one house and sparked a fire that seriously damaged two others. No one was home at the time, but the Slattery family returned this morning to survey the damage and see if anything could be salvaged. You know, replace the stuff inside, but you can't replace the other stuff. You know, all the memories, the pictures, the, you know. They had a lot of videotapes of her mother's passed away now, and they had a lot of videotapes of her. The water heater wasn't damaged, but was removed today and will be checked to see if it may have caused the explosion. The only part of the house with minimal damage was the basement. About a million anglers took part in the, the house from his mother, and he'd been living there with his wife and two children. He was away for the fishing opener when the house exploded last night. Luckily, his wife and children were away from the house, too. The timing was right for everybody to be out of the house. You know, you know someone's looking over somebody. Les Johnson lives two doors away. He was outside with his son when the explosion happened. The whole north side of the house just blew out. And then at the same time, it was all a fire. Today, firefighters were back on the scene trying to clean up the area and also trying to find out what caused the explosion and the fire. It took firefighters several hours to pump water from the basement of the home. They believe that's where the explosion occurred. After looking through the rubble, arson investigators pinpointed a cause. At this point in the investigation, uh, there's a lot of indication that it was a gas explosion. Investigators still are trying to determine if the problem was in the hot water heater or the furnace. Whatever the cause, an entire neighborhood is glad that no one was hurt. Carolyn Brookter, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. And the top news from around the world tonight. Bomb blasts shatter two... ...destroying the house and damaging two others nearby. No one was injured because the family who lived in the house was lucky enough to be gone at the time. Jeff Kelly has the story. This is what the house looked like this morning, shattered by the explosion, ripped open by investigators trying to pinpoint how it happened. 
Tom Slattery lived here with his wife and two kids. He was off on a fishing trip when the house blew up. His wife and kids happened to be staying with relatives. Slattery lost everything in the explosion, everything but his sense of humor. My wife had called me about just about 10 o'clock, said the house was gone. And then I couldn't understand why it was gone because I thought I paid a house payment, but you know, I was, but unfortunately, you know, that's not what she meant. The house blew up around 9.30 last night. Hundreds of neighbors watched as firefighters doused the flames. Some were there right after the explosion. I seen flames all the way shooting up in the air, like really, really high. And I was just devastated. I'm going, oh my God, I thought somebody might have got hurt. This woman was taking care of the Slattery's house for the weekend. She was at work when it exploded. This afternoon, investigators carried off the house's water heater. They say it might have triggered the explosion. The furnace is another possibility. As for the Slatteries, they're just thankful no one was home. Jeff Kelly, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. Tonight, the Slatteries are staying with relatives. Investigators say the cause of the fire was probably a gas explosion. People who live in an area of Minneapolis that's had some problems in the past got together today to try to make things better. The area is the Stevens Square community on East 18th Street in Stevens... get the liver ready. And then they'll bring the child or whoever it is, the recipient down about four hours after that donor is in the operating room and open that child up. It's a long operation, it's an all day thing. And it is a tough operation. Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. This is my nephew, her son, Jeremiah. This is Patricia. Catherine Bertram is about to give up a part of her liver to try and save her dying baby granddaughter. This is my mother, Wilma, from Memphis. I can say no right to the time that they're wheeling me into the operating room. <laughs> but I think I finally convinced all of the doctors that are involved, the surgeons, that that will never happen. We, we just are sure that this is going to work for Carrie. And that she's going to be a healthy baby. So, no. No doubt, no fear. 7.30 a.m. While Catherine is prepared, Dr. Brolsch heads to surgery. Tell me about Carrie in particular. What happens if she doesn't get this transplant I today? I think she's very sick. She just managed to run through an infection in the last few days. Uh, I've seen her last night. She, uh, I think, definitely needs a liver transplant for, for any reason within the next few weeks. She just. I think she's just falling apart. 8 a.m. Family returns to Ronald McDonald House to begin the long wait. And the moment Jesus is away from that baby, and everything is going to be okay. Just the first five hours will be the most exciting one. Now, what happens when you finally get a, a look at Catherine's liver? If, despite all our measurements, if there's anything different from what we've seen so far thank you uh, i would pick out why can't we not just simply take this one out here this left lateral so there will be no no incision on on carry until you know you have a good liver right exactly that exactly that oh perfect thank you. that's a very favorable anatomy give me my uh, vascular clem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now where are we going to do our dissection start start right here, here but then right here. come over this way oh god this doesn't no, 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 this is not working. Uh, one of these. She's probably wondering where I'm at. Catherine's daughter, Sean, and the rest of the family return to the hospital for one last visit with Carrie. You can watch her, though. I mean, you can tell that she is happy and excited to see me because when the minute I touch her, that heart rate goes off. Hi. Hi. You gonna wake up for a little while? Hi. You were wondering where Mama was at, huh? This is a very crucial part. I need these small needles, you know. I'm gonna get you all better today. There's another little artery to the left median here. Here's a little tiny one, yeah. That should take care of this lobe here. Go to sleep. Mama's not going anywhere. Mama's gonna stay right here. Call for the baby. Come. 
You want to call for the baby now? What they going to do now? We'll take Carrie down to surgery. 12.30 p.m. <laughs> Carrie is prepared for surgery. <laughs> oh, God. Damn it. Switch my hand, please. Switch my hand, please. Thank you. Stitch. With little ceremony, Dr. Brose removes a segment of Catherine's liver. Over. Over. Okay, turn the table back toward me. Five or stitch, please. Thanks. This lady was a real good candidate, wasn't she? Oh, the size is perfect, I tell you. We should start selecting grandmothers first, you know. <laughs> Here we have the child that is extremely sick can suffer from hemorrhaging, can suffer from any other things. Take care. So we still have an extraordinary piece of surgery to do before this is all completed. Okay, who are delivered? I think the morning session is, uh, has really been a success so far. Catherine, your surgery is all over. It is fine. 3 p.m., while Catherine is taken to recovery. Yeah, here she comes. Yeah, they've got her right now. I love you. Dr. Brosh's attention turns to Carrie. So this is really where we want to go here, you know, for the anastomosis. We will, first of all, we have to remove the old liver, the diseased liver. Hold on to this one here. Identify all the vascular structure. Don't pull it too much down, just like that. And then the new one needs to be plugged in. A small right angle, please. It's always been Catherine's yeah. prayer. Yeah, she keeps asking for your granddaughter. She's, Car she's, is it Carrie? Carrie, right. Yeah deep from her heart and her spirit that another baby would not have to die in order for Carrie to live. Mm, I love you. Everything's going fine. Everything's going fine. Small Kelly. And to me, this is just a, the fruition, the fulfillment, if you were, of her prayers. Oops, come on. Hold your hand on here so that he doesn't cut into the balls here. Come back. Come back. I'll come back. Just a few minutes, I'll come back in a little bit, okay? She's out, and she's doing this great. It's good news. Halfway there. And I think you need to be aware that we are in touchy areas here. The next few moments are both difficult and astonishing to watch. Irrigation. Carry scissors. At 4 p.m., Brolch removes Carrie's diseased liver. Sorry. All of these lobes were totally abnormal. None of this liver was normal anymore. So the layman could make it a diagnosis and an indication for transplantation, pretty clear. 30 minutes later. Okay, we have it here. Carrie receives her grandmother's liver. All right. It's her liver. It's in the family. The tissue is, is great, and it's a live liver. Oh, that's coming. Hold the liver. Hold it like something very special, all right? Okay, this is about, this is the ideal position. 5.30 p.m. All right. A call from the hospital. Fine, we were just dying to hear. We're so happy that it's working in there. Ready, go, boom. It worked, it worked! <laughs> <laughs> it's working, but it didn't have working any problems. Fine. They got it in, her blood went right through it. It started <laughs> functioning like that. She said it was the best one they'd ever done. How are you? Oh. Hi. Are you awake? I'm so proud of you. No, no, I'm proud of you. You just oh. did fine. Absolutely fine. We can't wait. I can't wait to get in there and see her and hug her and touch her. You know, I can't wait. So we're excited. And I can't, God. Down below there. Just move it back. You know, it's been so long. It's been eight months. You know, and I never thought it was going to happen. And it did. She came through. She was strong and she pulled through. Hi! You look so good. Mom is so proud. I love you. Mom loves you. Get ready for 